Hi everyone, I'm Farida and welcome back to the Dental Radiology. I had a video on slab technique, what it is and how it's used. Today I want to review some examples on the slab technique. So if you missed my video, check it up. I'm sure it would be very helpful. So let's do this. I will be going over on how to determine the location of an object that appears on intraoral radiographs. Let's review the slab technique. The slope stands for the same lingual opposite buckle, using two red graphs, placing the film to the lingual of the teeth and changing the two position. This will make any object that is buccal of the teeth automatically move in the opposite direction and the object that is lingual of the teeth automatically move in the same direction of the tube movement. Okay, this is our first example. We have a premolar preapical radiograph and a canine preapical radiograph. The premolar preapical radiograph would be much more distal and the canine preapical radiograph would be to the mesial. We have a tiny radiopac object that is labeled A and it's a supernumerary tooth in the mandible. So we have five steps using two images above, identifying one as image number one, would be the premolar perapical radiograph and image number two, the canine perapical radiograph. Step number two, you must select two things that are visible on both images. We have a fixed or known object that would be the mandibular first premolar and then we have the unknown object that is the supernumerary tooth. Step number three, now determine which direction the image appears to move from one to two. So from image number one, that is the preapical radiograph of the premolars, we're going to the canine preapical radiograph, so we're moving to the mesial or anterior. Step number four, determine where the image of the unknown object, or the supernumerary tooth, moves in the relation to the fixed object that is the mandibular first premolar from image number one to image number two. So the supernumerary tooth moves more mesial or anterior than the mandibular first premolar from image number one to image number two. Step number five, using the slob rule, same lingual, opposite buckle, this shows that the unknown object image moves in the same direction as the image from 1 to 2 and therefore it is to the lingual of the mandibular first premolar. So the supernumerary teeth is positioned in the lingual. Okay, let's do another example on the horizontal angle change for the slob rule technique. Showing two preapical radiographs of the mandibular molar region, like uh, we have a slightly different horizontal angulation. In the first image, the object that is impacted, second premolar, is superimposed over the forcation and the mesial root of the mandibular permanent first molar. On the second image, uh, that uh, we have the tube movement towards the mesial the impacted premolar is imaged and superimposed over the distal root. So it is moved to the opposite direction using the slab technique. The impacted premolar is located to the buccal of the roots of the mandibular first molars. Something else that you can see is that the orthodontic brackets that is on the buccal surface of the molar is moved distally in the opposite direction of the tube. So we know that the orthodontic brackets would be on the buccal surface of the molars. The slob rule can be used with vertical angle changes. However, it's usually used with the horizontal angle changes. When referring to the vertical angle changes, one images are described as its inferior or it could be superior. For example, when using two radiographs, a mandibular molar per apical radiograph and a molar bite wing radiograph, 
the mandibular molar parachoroidograph is taken with the inferior position of the tube and the molar radiograph as it's kind of the tube is superior or parallel so it would be kind of superior to the parapka radiograph this is an example with we have a metallic restoration that's marked with the star on the mandibular first molar and let's see the steps using the two image above identifying as image number one the mandibular molar practical radiograph and image number two the molar bite wing red graph the step number two is uh, selecting two things that are visible on both images so it would be a fixed or known object that would be the occlusal metallic restoration on the mandibular first molar and the unknown object that would be the metallic restoration that's marked with the star. The third step is that determining which direction the images would be appear from one to two. So we're going from a parabolic graph that we have a <coughs> negative angulation, and from one to two, going to the biting red graphy, would uh, the two position would kind of be superior or parallel? So it's going from inferior to superior this would be our vertical angle change next determining where the image of the unknown object the star moves in the relation to the fixed object that would be the metallic occlusal restoration from image number one to image number two the metallic restoration moves inferior from image number one to two compared to the occlusal metallic restoration so using the slob technique this shows that the unknown object that is the star moves in the opposite direction as the image goes from one to two so the tubes goes up and the metallic restoration is going down so the metallic restoration that would be the star is positioned in the buckle of the tooth i can use this technique with the anatomic landmarks comparison of an anatomy that could be displaced uh, when changing the horizontal or vertical angulation so in this radiography you can see the inferior border of the zygomatic process of the maxilla that is superimposed on the maxillary molars. I know that this structure is in the buckle of the teeth so when I increase the vertical angulation the zygomatic process should go in the opposite direction of the tube so it would be superimposed on the maxillary molars if i want to correct this and move the zygomatic process from the maxillary molars i have to decrease the vertical angulation so on the second radiography you can see that with decreasing the vertical angulation the zygomatic process is not superimposed on the maxillary molars Okay, that was all for today. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing my channel and helping me to grow this channel. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for participating and spreading out the information to ones it would be helpful. Keep smiling and have an awesome day.